remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Genius, Travis Cook, back with you once again, and Phil Robertson from the hit TV show Duck Dynasty has landed in a little bit of controversy or hot water, whatever you want to call it, over some comments he made in GQ magazine recently. Uh, it's upset a lot of the gay community, and it even uh, has gotten him suspended or fired, depending on who you listen to, from his show. And I got to tell you, I, I've read the comments that he put that, that he said in, in the magazine article. And I gotta tell you, I don't see how a reasonable person can find the comments offensive. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that I expect everybody to agree with what he said or to agree with what he's saying, but in terms of just is something offensive, is something mean spirited, is, is something homophobic, I don't see that in his comments at all. Now, some of you are shaking your heads and you can't understand this, but let's go through his actual comments. Let's go word for word through what Phil Robertson said and see if there's anything truly offensive in there, all right? Here's the first little blurb of what he said, and I'm quoting from Robertson here. It seems like, to me, a vagina, as a man, would be more desirable than a man's anus. That's just me. I'm just thinking, there's more there. She's got more to offer. I mean, come on, dudes. You know what I'm saying? But hey, sin, it's not logical, my man. It's just not logical. Okay, so basically what Phil Robertson is saying right there is that he prefers, he likes vaginas. You're in good company, so do I. And he doesn't understand, he doesn't compute to him why a man would prefer something else to a vagina. What's offensive about that? I mean, think about it. If the shoe were on the other foot and some gay guy somewhere said, you know, I really don't understand why straight dudes like vaginas. I don't get it. Well, I wouldn't be surprised that he said that. Certainly wouldn't be offended that he said that. He, he probably legitimately could not conceptualize why a straight man would like a vagina. Okay, I get it. And hey, I'd probably find it a little bit humorous that he, that he would have phrased it in that way. Certainly I wouldn't be offended as a straight person, as a member of the straight community, as though there really is such a thing. I certainly wouldn't find it any sort of swipe at our entire community. No, not at all. It's just... A gay guy says he doesn't like vagina. All right. In Phil Robertson's case, a straight guy says he doesn't like booty. He prefers vagina. Okay. What's so controversial about that? Seems like saying two plus two equals four. Okay. So he goes on and he says, quoting again, everything is blurred and what's right and what's wrong. Sin becomes fine. Start with homosexual behavior and just morph out from there. Bestiality, sleeping around with this woman and that woman and that woman and those men. And he goes on to, to quote from the book of Corinthians, or paraphrase, I should say. He says, neither the adulterers, the idolaters, I can never pronounce that word, the male prostitutes, the homosexual offenders, the greedy, the drunkards, the slanders, the swindlers, they won't inherit the kingdom of God. Don't deceive yourself. It's not right. Okay, there again, I will ask those of you in the offended brigade, what on earth is offensive about what he just said? Now again, I'm not asking why you disagree with it. I'm asking what's offensive about it. Phil Robertson was asked a question from a reporter about his religion and his beliefs. He answered that question with what his religion teaches him about those particular issues and with what he believes about those particular issues. He did not say anything incendiary. He did not say anything hateful. He did not advocate any sort of violence against anybody. Basically, what he said is that, you know what, my religion says there's a whole lot of people that aren't going to inherit the kingdom of God. People who, who engage in all sorts of activities, among them homosexuality, among them people who are greedy. Wait, you would think that liberals would have loved that part. They seem to have overlooked that. People who are drunkards, swindlers, the whole nine. So he's not just even, he, he's not even just throwing the gay people under the bus. He's saying, hey, there's a lot of folks that ain't going to make it according to my religion. Now, I want to ask you people something. In that scenario that Phil Robertson has asked, what does your religion believe about homosexuality and sin? What was he supposed to have done? What would you have preferred him to do? Would you have preferred him to lie about his religion and lie about his personal beliefs? 
Would you have preferred for him to hide the parts of his religion that you might not agree with or that you might find a little bit offensive? Or would it be better for everybody involved for him to honestly answer a question that he was asked? Again, no one's saying that any of you people have to agree with it. No one's saying that anybody has to undertake Christianity. Although for your eternal salvation, it'd be a pretty good idea if you did. But we're going to let that aside. He was asked what he believes. He was asked what his religion teaches. And he told you. If you don't like it, that's fine. No one's putting a gun to your head and saying you have to believe it. People on the left and people in the gay community and people in all sorts of liberal enclaves always talk about tolerance. Well, for one time, why can't you tolerate what one of us believes? Well, as I said, there's a lot of uproar about it. Uh, someone from the group GLAD, or I guess it was GLAD, someone named Wilson Cruz, I don't know who he is, but I guess he's some kind of spokesman or official or somebody in that group, said the following. Phil and his family claim to be Christian, but Phil's lies about an entire community fly in the face of what true Christians believe. Okay, hold up. First of all, Mr. Cruz, who are you to say what true Christians believe? What authority do you have over Phil Robertson or me or anybody else to say that you know truly what Christians believe. Now, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't know if Mr. Cruz is a Christian or not. I don't know. But even so, it seems odd to me for him to say that what Phil just said about his religion and the text from which it comes, the Bible, for him to say that, whoa, 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 that's in contrast to what true Christians believe. What gives you the authority to say that, Mr. Cruz? You're a spokesperson for GLAD, not for the Christian religion going on with Cruz's comments here. He clearly knows nothing about gay people or the majority of Louisianians and Americans who support legal recognition for loving and committed gay and lesbian couples. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where did Robertson say anything at all about recognition or legal recognition for gay couples or lesbian couples or gay marriage or anything? He never breathed one word of that. Now, I don't doubt he's probably against it. That's neither here nor there. He was never asked about that. He never said anything about that. You chose to take this controversy and attach it to the gay marriage debate. He never said anything about that. You're arguing a point that has never even been in the discussion. Going on with Cruz's comments here. Phil's decision to push vile and extreme stereotypes is a stain on A&E. And he goes on from there. Wait, what vile and extreme stereotypes did, did Robertson push there? The stereotype that Gay men don't like vaginas? That's a vile and extreme stereotype? I, I thought that was common sense. I wouldn't expect gay men to like vaginas. I'm not really shocked. It's not really extreme. It's not even a stereotype as much as it is obvious. What vile and extreme stereotypes did Phil Robertson talk about? I didn't see any. All he talked about was two things. Gay men don't like vaginas. All right, that's obvious. And what his religion believes in terms of homosexuality and a number of other sins. What about any of that is unreasonable? Again, not saying any of you have to agree with it. Not saying you have to adopt his feelings. Just saying, hey, the dude was asked a couple of questions. He answered them honestly. And if you people are so, are so ingrained into this idea of tolerance as you say, that, as you, say you are then frankly, you shouldn't find any of this controversy at all. And you should say, hey, he believes what he believes. We believe what we believe. We all move forward. But you didn't do that, did you? You didn't do that at all. Closing, I'm going to say this. And, and again, these comments here I'm making are not directed towards the entire gay community. I'm convinced that what we're seeing here is a representation of a very small part of that community. People who are in kind of self-acclaimed leadership roles within that community who claim to speak for them and they probably don't. I've never really bought the idea that the uh, issues that gay people face are anywhere congruent with the struggles of African Americans or other minorities. But you, you often hear people make that claim that, that the su supposed discrimination against gays is somehow similar to discrimination against blacks years ago or other people at other times. I've never bought that. But for those of you who do believe that, for those of you who believe there are enough similarities 
between the two to draw parallels. I point out one thing to you. One of the biggest things that has hampered race relations in America today, post-civil rights, I'm talking about 70s, 80s, 90s, and, and into the 2000s, one of the biggest things that continues to hamper race relations is the, is the cacophony of self-acclaimed leaders within the minority communities who run around doing little more than acting offended every time they feel they have the chance. Yeah, you know, your Al Sharptons, your Jesse Jacksons, and so forth. Crying racism at the drop of, of a hat anytime they can find anything even remotely newsworthy, anytime a camera's around, anytime a microphone's around. The end result of that, sadly, is that because they cry wolf so much that when legitimate situations arise where there is legitimate racism that needs to be addressed, many times people overlook it because of the volume of racist cries that come from the Sharptons and the Jacksons of the world. And that fact has really held back race relations in this nation. The reason I'm telling you that is because I can see those of you in the, the gay and lesbian and trans whatever community who insist on being offended anytime somebody says something you disagree with, if you keep that up, you're going to face the very same kind of problems that minorities have faced for 30 and 40 years. Because people are going to cry wolf so much that the rest of America, the majority of America, is just going to throw their hands up and say, whatever, those crazy gays are at it again. Now, I don't want to see that. I don't think that should happen. But it will if you keep trying to pick at every little thing that you don't agree with and try and force people to either hide their true beliefs or to change their beliefs to fit whatever worldview you have. Now, do you really want tolerance or not? Because real tolerance means people like Phil Robertson and people like me and people like whomever have the right to believe what he just said. They have the right to say it publicly. That they don't have to change their religious beliefs or change their religion or pretend that parts of their religion don't exist just because you might be a little bit uncomfortable about it. Guess what? There are people in this world who are uncomfortable about things you believe. And that's okay. Now, if you really want tolerance, you won't get offended by it. But if you're looking to be offended then these struggles that you're going through are only going to persist. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We will see you next time.